The quest to understand our origins is one of humanity's most profound and enduring pursuits. For centuries, scholars, scientists and adventurers have sought to uncover the secrets of our past, piecing together the story of how we came to be. Central to this quest is the elusive Missing Link, a hypothetical species that bridges the evolutionary gap between our ancient ancestors and modern humans. Despite numerous discoveries and advances in genetics, paleoanthropology and archaeology, this crucial piece of the puzzle has remained tantalizingly out of reach. In this video, we will look at two early hominin species that may bridge that gap and be the starting point of our divergence from the rest of the animal kingdom. Sahelanthropus chedensis, say that three times fast, is one of the oldest known species in the early human family tree. This species lived sometime between 7 and 6 million years ago in West Central Africa, specifically in Chad. Walking upright may have helped this species survive in diverse habitats, including forests and grasslands. Although we've only cranial material from Sahelanthropus, studies so far show that the species had a combination of ape-like and human-like features. Ape-like features included a small brain, even slightly smaller than a chimpanzee's, sloping face, very prominent brow ridges, and an elongated skull. Human-like features included small canine teeth, a short middle part of the face, and a spinal cord opening underneath the skull instead of towards the back, as seen in non-bipedal apes. Some of the oldest evidence of a human-like species moving about in an upright position comes from Sahelanthropus. The foramen magnum, which is the large opening where the spinal cord exits out of the cranium from the brain, is located further forward than in apes or any other primate except in humans. This feature indicates that the head of Sahelanthropus was held on an upright body, probably associated with walking on two legs. The first and so far only fossils of Sahelanthropus are nine cranial specimens from northern Chad. A research team of scientists led by French paleontologist Michel Burnett uncovered the fossils in 2001. Before 2001, early humans in Africa had only been found in the Great Rift Valley in East Africa and sites in South Africa, so the discovery of Sahelanthropus fossils in West Central Africa shows that the earliest humans were more widely distributed than previously thought. Unfortunately, most of Sahelanthropus's teeth are heavily worn, and there have not yet been studies of its tooth wear or tooth isotopes to indicate diet. However, we can infer that based on its environment and other early human species that it ate mainly a plant-based diet. This probably included leaves, fruit, seeds, roots, nuts and even insects. So what is the evidence that Sahelanthropus could be our direct ancestor and that fabled missing link? Well. The first early humans or hominins diverged from apes sometime between 6 and 7 million years ago in Africa. Sahelanthropus has two defining human anatomical traits. One, small canine teeth, and two, walking upright on two legs instead of four legs. This is particularly interesting as it indicates Sahelanthropus may be the direct ancestor of both humans and chimpanzees. From what evidence we have today, this would make Sahelanthropus the oldest or one of the oldest hominins, which would shift the centre of origin of our species away from East Africa. It's also suggested that Sahelanthropus could be a sister group to the 5.5 to 4.5 million year old Ardipithecus and later hominins. However, due to a lack of fossil evidence, this cannot be conclusively proven. Living around 6 million years ago, Aurorin Tugenesis is one of the oldest early humans on our family tree. The name of genus Aurorin means original man. 
in the local language Tugen. Individuals of this species were approximately the size of a chimpanzee and had small teeth with thick enamel, similar to modern humans. The most important fossil of this species is an upper femur, showing evidence of bone buildup, typical of a biped. So Auroran to Genesis individuals climbed trees but also probably walked upright with two legs on the ground. In 2001, a research team led by French paleontologist Brigitte Sanout and French geologist Martin Pickford discovered the species in the Tujan Hills region of central Kenya. There they found more than a dozen early human fossils dating between 6.2 and 6 million years old. Because of its novel combination of ape and human traits, the researchers gave a new genus and species name to these fossils, Auroran to Genesis. So far, Auroran to Genesis is the only species of the genus Auroran. From Auroran's low, rounded molars and small canine teeth, paleoanthropologists can infer that this species ate mainly a plant-based diet. This probably included leaves, fruit, seeds, roots, nuts and insects, very similar to Sahelanthropus' diet. Auroran had small teeth relative to its body size. Its dentition differs from that found in Australopithecus, in that its cheek teeth are smaller and less elongated, and that its enamel is thicker. The dentition differs from both these species in the presence of micelle groove on the upper canines. The canines are ape-like, but reduced, like those found in Miocene apes and female chimpanzees. Auroran had small post canines and was a microdont, like modern humans, whereas Australopithecines were a megadonts. However, some researchers have denied that this is compelling evidence that Auroran was more closely related to modern humans than Australopithecines, as early members of the genus Homo who were almost certainly the direct ancestors of modern humans, were also megadonts. Auroran is at the base of the human family tree, and has more ape-like features than human-like ones, except that it walked upright on two legs. So how did bipedalism originate? Well, one hypothesis suggests that early apes walked on branches while using their arms for balance, and then this technique eventually made its way to the ground. If Auroran proves to be a direct human ancestor, then according to some paleoanthropologists, Australopithecines, such as Australopithecus afarensis, the most famous of which is named Lucy, may be considered a side branch of the hominid family tree. Auroran is both earlier by almost 3 million years and more similar to modern humans than Australopithecus. The main similarity is that the Auroran femur is morphologically closer to that of Homo sapiens than is Lucy's. There is however some debate over this point. This debate is largely centred around the fact that Lucy was a female and the Auroran femur it has been compared to belonged to a male. The search for the missing link in human evolution is more than just scientific endeavour. It is a quest to understand the very roots of our existence. Through the tireless efforts of scientists across various disciplines, we have made significant strides in mapping the intricate web of our ancestry. Each discovery, from ancient fossils to genetic markers, adds a new layer to the complex narrative of human evolution, bringing us closer to identifying that elusive transitional species. The implications of finding this missing link are profound. Such a discovery would not only fill a critical gap in our evolutionary timeline, but also deepen our understanding of the processes that shaped us into the beings that we are today. It would illuminate the path of our ancestors, showcasing the adaptability and resilience that have been hallmarks of our species from the very beginning. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.